So what is up guys, Shoot of the Savage back, and today we are here with NFL Week, Deontay Harris, Michael Pittman Jr., Alex Smith, Julio Jones when he was a Falcon, and Larry Fitzgerald predictions. It is Week 11 predictions, and uh, anyways, uh, if you are looking to watch certain matchup timestamps are in the description below, so click on that matchup you want to watch if you're there for that. Uh, anyways, last week I was 6-8. My most inaccurate week of the season. I, I'm in this kind of rut, so hopefully this video I can rebound. Uh, we only got two teams on their bye this week, the Rams and the Broncos. So uh, 15 matches to get to, so without further ado, let's get this video started. So we are starting off with our Thursday night football matchup between the New England Patriots and the Atlanta Falcons. Rematch of Super Bowl 51, obviously 28-3. Starting out with the Patriots, uh, excellent game. You guys played against the uh, Cleveland Browns last week, winning 45-7. to uh, Mac Jones threw for 198 yards, three touchdowns, no picks. So good that they brought in uh, Brian Hoyer, Hoyer, who threw 85 yards and a touchdown. Uh, but honestly, the main highlights of this game was the rush and the defense. As Stevenson ran for 100 yards and two touchdowns, followed by Kendrick Bourne for 43 yards, Brandon Bolden for 32, and then J.J. Taylor with 11. Uh, lead receiver was Kendrick Bourne, four receptions, 98 yards and a touchdown, followed by Jacoby Myers, four receptions, 49 yards, and his first career receiving touchdown. It took him like... 137, like 139 receptions until he got that touchdown. So congrats out to him. Uh, then Brandon Bolden, three receptions, 38 yards. And then finished it off. Hunter Henry, four receptions, 37 yards, and two touchdowns. Uh, the defense, yeah, was just amazing. Allowed a touchdown on the opening drive, then just shut them down for the rest of the game. Well done, boys. And then the Falcons, after the hype that came from beating the Saints, uh, you follow that up with a 43-3 to egg against the Dallas Cowboys. Matt Ryan was terrible. Under 50% completion percentage, 117 yards, no touchdowns, and two picks. So bad that Josh Rosen came in, he threw for 14 yards and a touchdown. No, I mean a pick. So yeah. Uh, lead rusher was Wayne Gallman with 55 yards, and then Cordero Patterson with 25. Uh, lead receiver was Kyle Pitts, four receptions, 60 yards. Then uh, Zacchaeus with 22 yards, and honestly, there was really no one else to mention. You guys were just terrible. The defense, pfft, what the hell is that? Allowed 43 points to the Dallas Cowboys. So, honestly, I expected you to lose the Cowboys, but not like this. So, Patriots are seven point favorites to win this one. I'm going to say that they win, but don't cover the spread because they're going to win of a score of 34 to 28, which was the final score of Super Bowl 51. And now you have our very first Sunday matchup between the San Francisco 49ers and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Starting off with the Niners, what a victory over the LA Rams. Like, I knew. I should have taken the Niners. I knew, I, I played the narrative saying that the 49ers uh, have won their last four games against the Rams, but I still took the Rams. Big regrets. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo just had to be a game manager, threw for 182 yards, two touchdowns, no picks. The game plan is simple. Allow the rest of the offense, not name Jimmy Garoppolo, to do the damage because Elijah Mitchell ran for 91 yards. Uh, Debo Samuel ran for 36 yards and a touchdown and followed it up with five receptions for 97 yards and a touchdown. And then George Kittle, five receptions, 50 yards and a touchdown. Um, and then Brandon Ayuk, three receptions, 26 yards. That was pretty much it. Uh, the defense just completely silenced uh, the LA Rams. Um, you know, I mean, the only person you really struggled against was uh, Cooper Cup, but you did force two Matt Stafford picks. That was a really good statement victory for you guys. And then the Jaguars, I mean, you made a late rally. You nearly beat the Colts, but it just wasn't enough. Trevor Lawrence threw for 162 yards, no touchdowns, no picks. Not his best performance, but... Not his worst. Uh, lead rusher was Jamal Agnew with 79 yards and a touchdown, followed by James Robinson with 57 yards and a touchdown. Uh, lead receiver was Dan Arnold with uh, five receptions, 67 yards. Marvin Jones Jr., two receptions, 35 yards. And then Robinson, four receptions, 27 yards. Uh, that was pretty much it. Uh, the defense really struggled against uh, Jonathan Taylor. I mean, Carson Wentz was pretty ineffective this game. Uh, but in the end, your offense just didn't have enough to try to take down the um, Indianapolis Colts. Uh, 49ers are six and a half point favorites to win this one, and as long as they keep the game plan, don't let Garoppolo have to do, have to carry the workload. Give me, give me the Niners. They win and cut this. And now you have our very next matchup between the Washington football team and the Carolina Panthers. Kind of the revenge game of Ron Rivera, even though that was last year. And I also remember the one thing I also remember from the football team and Panthers was that was the game. The last time Dwayne Haskins started a game. Uh, anyways, on to the uh, football team. A huge. Victory over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, 29-19. Uh, Taylor Heineke threw for 256 yards, one touchdown, no picks. Uh, follow that up, Antonio Gibson ran for 64 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, man might be back. It's good to see. Uh, lead receiver was Terry McLaurin, six receptions, 59 yards. Followed by uh, Carter, three receptions, 56 yards. And then McKissick, four receptions, 35 yards. And that was pretty much it. Uh, the defense did a good job at handling the Patriots. Like the first half... 
like they just completely shut them down. Uh, you, but later on in the game, the um, Buccaneers did make a comeback. But uh, with a li- with under eleven minutes to go, the football team goes on one of the best drives I've ever seen in recent history. It took ten minutes. They ran down all the clock and scored the go it and basically just iced the game. So that was a really good a really good victory for you guys. And then the Carolina Panthers. Um, Cam's back. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, PJ Walker threw for one hundred sixty seven yards, no touchdowns, one pick. But Cam Newton. Ran, uh, threw for eight yards and a touchdown. He also ran uh, for 14 yards and a touchdown and, of course, takes off his helmet in the end zone. I'm back! All I could think about was um, Kyle's brother in uh, <laughs> South Park. Uh, no, his cousin. His cousin, but... Anyways, a big victory over the uh, Arizona Cardinals. CMC ran for 95 yards. Uh, Chiba Hubbard had 27 and a touchdown. Uh, lead receiver was also Christian McCaffrey with 66 yards. And then uh, Robbie Anderson, four receptions, 37 yards. Amir Abdullah, four receptions, 27 yards. And then DJ Moore, four receptions, 24 yards. Uh, the defense just completely shut down Colt McCoy and uh, the Arizona Cardinals. So good victory for you guys. But, um, you know, you guys are three and a half point favorites to win this one. But I'm, I'm still kind of conflicted between P.J. Walker and Cam Newton. Who's going to start? What's it going to go down like? I think Cam's going to start. But give me the football team in this one. And now you have our very next matchup between the Green Bay Packers and Minnesota Vikings. Just a classic uh, NFC North rivalry. Who doesn't love Packers and Vikings? It's always a good time to see those two. Anyway, starting off with the Packers, um, big 17-0 victory over the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, Aaron Rodgers in his first game back was kind of meh, threw for 292 yards, no touchdowns and a pick. He got picked off by Jamal Adams. So yeah, there's a problem with that. But anyways, uh, but the main man was A.J. Dillon, ran for 66 yards and two touchdowns. Aaron Jones, his workload was cut back because he only had 25 yards. Uh, but actually, no, he did get injured. So uh, now A.J. Dillon's going to be taking over for a little bit. Uh, lead receiver, uh, Devontae Adams, seven receptions, 78 yards, followed by A.J. Dillon, two receptions, 62 yards. And then Aaron Jones, four receptions, 61 yards. That was pretty much it. Oh, the defense just silenced the um, Seattle Seahawks. I think Russell Wilson was just a little too eager to come back. I think he came back a little too early. Maybe had he sat this game out, maybe Geno Smith could have led them to a victory, but who knows. Uh, and then the Minnesota Vikings uh, sneaking themselves back into the playoff race. A big 27-20 victory over the LA Chargers. Uh, Kirk Cousins threw for 294 yards, two touchdowns, no picks. Good day for him. Uh, Dalvin Cook ran for 94 yards and a touchdown. Uh, lead receiver, once again, Justin Jefferson, nine receptions, 143 yards. Man, just a beast. Uh, then Adam Thielen, five receptions, 65 yards. Alex Mattinson, one reception, 24 yards. And then Cook, three receptions, 24 yards. Uh, that was pretty much it. Uh, the defense w- was a bit of a back and forth affair that they had with the Chargers, but ultimately the Vikings just came out on top. Uh, Packers are two and a half point favorites to win this one. And yeah, I'm gonna say that the Packers win and cover the spread, but if the run game of the Vikings is strong, they're gonna put up a good uh, game against the Packers, but still give it the Packers. And now you have our very next matchup, a battle of 0-16 between the Detroit Lions and Cleveland Browns. Uh, now, I only said uh, battle of 0-16 because they're the only two teams in NFL history to go 0-16, and they're also the two most cursed franchises in NFL history. Starting off, the Detroit Lions. You didn't lose last week. Y- you tied the Steelers, but that's still something. Jared Goff threw for 114 yards, no touchdowns, no picks. He was just outright terrible. They just said, you know what? Let the rush game take over. And they did. DeAndre Swift ran, ran for 130 yards. Uh, Igwi- Igwiki, I, I don't know how to say it, ran for 56 yards and a touchdown. And then Jefferson, not Justin Jefferson, a different Jefferson, ran for 41 yards and a touchdown. Literally, there was a point in the game where uh, Goff had like 44 yards and the Lions had the lead. It's just like, yeah, maybe letting Jared Goff do anything is a bad idea. Uh, lead receiver was Amon St. Brown, four receptions, 61 yards. And then Khalif Raymond, Four receptions, 29 yards. Then Benson, two receptions, 17 yards. That was pretty much it. Oh, the defense really clutched up in overtime, forcing two fumbles. But in the end, you just uh, it was just such a sloppy affair. And the conditions were awful, so that doesn't really help your case. And then under the Cleveland Browns, you teased me with your opening drive. You know, you, you go down the field, score a touchdown, and then just get completely shut down for the rest of the game. Baker Mayfield was terrible, threw for 73 yards, a touchdown, and a pick. Uh, got replaced with Case Keenum due to injury. He threw for 81 yards. Uh, the only guy I can highlight is Dearness Johnson with 99 yards. Uh, lead receiver was Donovan Peoples-Jones with seven receptions, 58 yards. Jarvis Landry, four receptions, 26 yards. And Austin Hooper, four receptions, 25 yards, and a touchdown. And that was pretty much it. Uh, the defense just fell apart to Mac Jones and Brian Hoyer. Yeah, there, there, there's really nothing else I could say about this. 
Browns are 10-point favorites to win this one. If they get Nick Chubb back, it's going to be an easy victory. Just ground and pound. Game of the Browns, they win, but don't cover the spread. And now you have our very next matchup between the Indianapolis Colts and the Buffalo Bills. Frank Reich's return. I mean, he did return last year in the playoffs, and uh, Frank Reich has played against the Bills a couple of times. But it is a rematch of the 2020 uh, AFC wildcard game. Starting out with the Colts, a good victory over the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, Carson Wentz was completely underwhelming through for 180 yards. No touchdowns, no picks, because it was all Jonathan Taylor with 116 yards and a touchdown. Uh, lead receiver, once again, Michael Pittman Jr., five receptions, 71 yards, followed by Jack Doyle, three receptions, 31 yards, and then Naheem Hines, two receptions, 17 yards. Uh, and that was pretty much it. Uh, the defense did a good job at shutting down the Jaguars, even though the Jags made a late push. And you guys were able to sign that. So there's, honestly, that game was kind of boring. Nothing really much to highlight. And then the Buffalo Bills, are you back? I mean, yeah, you did have a bad loss to the Jaguars, but then you just beat up on the uh, New York Jets. The only thing you accomplished was killing off the legend of Mike White, but I need you to see, I need to see you beat a real team, not any of these fake teams that you completely obliterate. Uh, but Josh Allen threw for 366 yards, two touchdowns and a pick. Uh, the rush game was <laughs> completely spread out. Uh, Singletary ran for 43 yards and a touchdown. Breida had 28 yards and a touchdown. And Zach Moss, 27 yards and a touchdown. And Isaiah McKenzie, he had 17 yards and a touchdown. So the rush game, pretty spread out, but was extremely effective. Uh, lead receiver was Stephon Diggs, broke out. Eight receptions, 162 yards and a touchdown. Followed by Greg Davis, three receptions, 105 yards. Um, and uh, yeah, the only other person to have a receiving touchdown was Matt Breida. Uh, anyways, the defense... Just completely silenced uh, the Jets. Mike White, just the legend. He's over through four picks. Uh, and that's pretty much all I got to say. Bills are seven-point favorites to win the summer. I'm going to say that they win and cover the spread. Prove that they're still a legit team. And now you have our very next matchup, a rematch of the 2013 NFC wildcard game and 2018 NFC divisional game between my boys in the New Orleans Saints and the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, starting off with the Saints, a uh, tough loss that we had against the Tennessee Titans. We came close. But once again, our, we were just too little too late. Trevor Simeon threw for 298 yards, two touchdowns, no picks. Uh, he was okay. Uh, Taysom Hill ran for 11 yards. Uh, Mark Ingram was our lead rush with 47 yards and a touchdown, and he did break the all-time Saints rushing record, so congrats to him. I mentioned that in my last video. Go watch it if you haven't already. Uh, anyways, but lead receiver was Deontay Harris, three receptions, 84 yards. Mark Ingram, four receptions, 61 yards. Uh, Traquan Smith, four receptions, 44 yards and a touchdown. Then Marcus Callaway, two receptions, 37 yards and a touchdown. So that was it. Oh, the defense did a pretty good job at holding the Tennessee Titans down, but the special teams collapses that we had is what ruined it. Two Brian Johnson missed field goals, a Deontay Harris fumble on a kick return that led to a Titans touchdown, and Adam Trotman with a false start on the two-point conversion that would have tied the game. It's tough to see. And then the Eagles, a big victory over the Denver Broncos. Uh, Jalen Hurts threw for 178 yards, two touchdowns, one pick, but once again, it was all in the rushing game. Jordan Howard led with 83 yards, Boston Scott ran for 81, Jalen Hurts ran for 53, and that was pretty much it. Lead receiver was Devontae Smith, four receptions, 66 yards, and two touchdowns, followed by Quez Watkins, four receptions, 33 yards, and then Dallas Goddard, two receptions, 28 yards. Oh, the defense did a really good job at shutting down the uh, Denver Broncos, so a good victory for that. Uh, the only concern I have for the Eagles this week is, you know, you do all your damage on the ground. How is that going to do against the Saints? We're one of the best teams at shutting down the run. But at the same time, a lot of teams kind of bail out on the run and focus more on the pass because they know you're not going to beat us on the ground. So it, it really does question me. Are you guys going to be able to beat us on the ground? I say no. Eagles are one and a half point favorites, but Saints win. And now you have our very next matchup between the Miami Dolphins and New York Jets. Classic AFC East rivalry. Starting off with the Dolphins. A statement? I wouldn't say statement, but a big upset victory over the Baltimore Ravens on Thursday Night Football. Jacoby Brissett threw for 156 yards, no touchdowns, no picks. Uh, he got injured and got replaced with two attack of Iloa. What a pretty solid game through for 158 yards, no touchdowns, no picks. Uh, rushing game was, once again, really limited. Miles Gaskin only got 31 yards and only 19 for Albert Wilson. Uh, but uh, Albert Wilson also had four receptions for 87 yards. Uh, Isaiah Ford, four receptions, 84 yards. And then Jalen Waddle, four receptions, 61 yards. But the highlight of the game was two attack of Iloa. Uh, under getting blitz, throw just tries to throw the ball to Gaskin, but it gets caught by O-lineman Robert Hunt, and he somersaults in the end zone for the touchdown. But of course, that was a legal man downfield or a legal touching of the ball, and it got taken back. Look, if Patrick Mahomes' missed touchdown from the Super Bowl last year makes the top 100, this should be in the top 100, even though it didn't count. Please put this in the NFL top 100 plays of the season. And then the Jets, just terrible. 
Mike White, uh, he's dead. The, the legend of Mike White is over. They're for 251 yards, no touchdowns, and four picks. Uh, then comes in the elite Joe Flacco with 47 yards and a touchdown. He actually is getting the start against the Dolphins. So, uh, yeah, they're screwed. Uh, then Michael Carter was your lead rush with 39 yards. Followed up a uh, lead receiver, Corey Davis, five receptions, 93 yards. Then Elijah Moore, four, uh, three receptions, 44 yards and a touchdown. And then Michael Carter, four receptions, 43 yards. That was pretty much it. Uh, the defense was just scorched by the Buffalo Bills. But I honestly expect that. I expect the Bills just to have a good day, just have a field day over you. Uh, Dolphins are three-point favorites to win this one. And how they stunned the Ravens last week, I say that they win and cup this way. And now you have our very next matchup between the Baltimore Ravens and the Chicago Bears. Starting off with the Ravens, yikes. That was a disappointing matchup against the Miami Dolphins. Lamar Jackson did not have a good day through for 238 yards, one touchdown, and a pick. Uh, he also led rushing with 39 yards, followed by Devontae Freeman with uh, 35 yards. Uh, yeah, that was pretty much it. Lead receiver was Rashad Bateman, six receptions, 80 yards. Then Mark Andrews, excuse me, six receptions, 63 yards, and a touchdown. And then uh, Hollywood Brown, six receptions, 37 yards. And yeah, that was pretty much it. Uh, the defense, yeah, it was a bit of a battle, like back and forth between the Miami Dolphins, but the Dolphins defense just completely overshadowed that offense. And the defense, yeah, it was, it's Jacoby Brissett and Tua Tagovailoa. Not, not that hard to sh shut down either of those guys. And then the Bears, you were on your bye last week. Uh, but the last time you played, you got screwed over against the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers, 29 to 27. Uh, Justin Fields threw for 291 yards, one touchdown, one pick. He's starting to, he's getting better over time. Uh, Dave Montgomery was the lead rush with 63 yards, followed by Justin Fields with 45. Uh, Darnell Mooney had one carry for 15 yards and a touchdown. Uh, lead receiver was uh, Cole Komet, six receptions, 87 yards, followed by Allen Robinson. Starting to break out a little bit more, but I need more production, dude. You're such a bust. I took you in the third round in one of my leagues. Uh, four receptions, 68 yards, followed by Marquise Goodwin, one reception, 50 yards, then finished that off. Darnell Mooney, three receptions, 41 yards, and the go-ahead touchdown, but you guys just got screwed over by the referees. Uh, the defense, yeah, they struggled against the Pittsburgh Steelers at first, but was able to get their shit together and just shut them down for the rest of the game, but you did miss the game-winning field goal, so that hurts. Uh, Ravens are six-point favorites to win the summer. I'm just, I'm just going to say last week was a fluke. Ravens win and cut the spread. And now you have our very next matchup between the Houston Texans and Tennessee Titans. Just a classic AFC South rivalry. I say classic rivalry a lot in these videos, but it's whatever. Uh, Texans, you're on your bye last week, but came off a 17-9 loss to the Miami Dolphins last time you played. Uh, Tyrod Taylor was horrific. Threw for 249 yards, no touchdowns, and three picks. Maybe go back to Davis Mills. At this point, I don't know what you guys do. Philip Lindsay ran for 28 yards, and uh, Tyra Taylor ran for 23, and that was pretty much it. Lead receiver was Brandon Cook, six receptions, 56 yards, followed by Danny Amendola, three receptions, 49 yards, and then uh, Chris Conley with two receptions, 38 yards. And that was pretty much it. Uh, the defense, you know, did well at keeping the Miami Dolphins in check, but that was a Jacoby Brissett-led offense. Like I said, if it's Brissett or Tagovailoa, it's not that hard to silence that offense. But you came up short. And then the Titans, uh, victory over the New Orleans Saints, 23-21. to 21. Uh, Ryan Tannehill threw for 213 yards, one touchdown, no picks. Uh, Dante Foreman ran for 30 yards, and then Peterson ran for 21. You guys knew you're not going to beat them on the ground. Beat them in the air. Uh, um, Johnson led with receiving with five receptions, 100 yards, followed by Dante Foreman, two receptions, 48 yards. Uh, Jeff Swain, uh, four receptions for 26 yards, and then A.J. Brown, one reception, 16 yards. The difference maker of this game, though, was special teams. Had the Saints special teams not been as bad as it was, you guys would have won that. The Saints would have won this game. It's plain and simple. We would have won that if our special teams had it together. Uh, but anyways, Titans are 10-point favorites to win this one. I'm going to say that they win and cover the spread. Yeah, I, I like the Titans right now. And now you have our very first 4 o'clock matchup between the Cincinnati Bengals and the Las Vegas Raiders. Starting out with the Bengals, uh, last week you were on your bye, but you came off a 41-16 loss to the Cleveland Browns last time you played. Joe Burrow threw for 282 yards, no touchdowns, two picks. You guys were just horrible that day. Uh, Joe Mixon ran for 64 yards and two touchdowns, and that's main, the main highlight of the team. In terms of receiving, uh, T. Higgins, six receptions, 78 yards. Jamar Chase, six receptions, 49 yards. And then Mixon, five receptions, 46 yards. And that was pretty much it. Uh, the defense just got completely exposed by Baker Mayfield. Donovan Peoples-Jones, and Nick Chubb. But when you're getting exposed by Nick Chubb, it's kind of easy to understand. And then the Raiders. I was hoping this could be a shootout between 
you and the Chiefs, but it was just an ass kicking by the uh, Kansas City Chiefs. Derek Carr threw for 261 yards, two touchdowns, one pick. Uh, he was also your lead rush with 18 yards. Uh, Kenyon Drake ran for 16 yards, and Josh Jacobs ran for 16. Nothing else really to mention. Uh, lead receiver was Brian Edwards, three receptions, 88 yards, and a touchdown. Followed by Hunter Renfro, seven receptions, 46 yards. And uh, then Deshaun Jackson, one reception, 38 yards, and the most boneheaded play where he makes the catch, and instead of running towards the end zone, yeah, he just decides to fumble it back. Just tries to toss it back. It was like it was like when he was a rookie, when he played against the Dallas Cowboys, had a touchdown, and just dropped it before he, cr he broke the plane. So, yeah, no, not really that good. And the defense was just completely whipped by Patrick Mahomes and Daryl Williams, and also Travis Kelsey and Tyreek Hill. So, yeah, the Chiefs offense was alive last game, and you guys just couldn't keep up with that. Uh, Bengals are one-point favorites to win this one. I'm going to say that they rebound, get the win, and cut the spread. And now you have our very next match between the Dallas Cowboys and the Kansas City Chiefs. Starting off with the Cowboys, after a tough loss to the Denver Broncos, you rebound with a 43-3 victory over the Atlanta Falcons. Dak Prescott threw for 296 yards, two touchdowns, and no picks. A pretty good day for him, uh, but the rush game was also pretty strong. Um, Tony Pollard ran for 42 yards. Ezekiel Elliott ran for 41 yards and a touchdown. Uh, lead receiver was uh, C.D. Lamb, six receptions, 94 yards, followed by Tony Pollard, five rece uh, six receptions, 56 yards, and then Amari Cooper, five, four receptions, 51 yards. And that was pretty much it. The real highlight, though, was the defense just completely silenced Matt Ryan. Same with special teams. He just completely shut down the Falcons on the other side of the ball, and the offense just didn't have to do much, just didn't have to kill itself, and it was good enough. Uh, and then the Kansas City Chiefs. Are you guys back? Are you legit? I'm going to slow down and wait till... To see if you can, if you're consistently strong on offense like you were last time you played, but that was a good showing. One, 41 to 14 against the uh, L, uh, Las Vegas Raiders. Uh, Patrick Mahomes was excellent, threw for 406 yards, five touchdowns, no picks. Uh, Daryl Williams ran for 43 yards, and McKinnon ran for 26. But Travis Kelsey was the lead receiver, eight receptions, 119 yards, followed by Daryl Williams, nine receptions, 101 yards, and a touchdown. Uh, then Tyree Kale, seven receptions, 83 yards, and a touchdown. And then Byron Pringle, four receptions, 46 yards, and a touchdown. And the defense was just super strong. So honestly, the way that I see it, if the defense could just be like middle of the pack and the offense can continue to play the way that they do, I could still, I could see you making a return to the Super Bowl. But you got, I just need to see more consistency out of this team before I can consider them uh, contenders again for the, for the Super Bowl. I still see them as playoff contenders, but for now, just be more consistent. Uh, Chiefs are two and a half point favorites to win this one. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to say that they win and cut the spread. And now you have our very next matchup between the Arizona Cardinals and the Seattle Seahawks, a classic NFC West rivalry. Uh, starting off with the Cardinals, a uh, tough loss to the Carolina Panthers. I did not expect you guys to get blown out the way you did. Colt McCoy was terrible, threw for 107 yards, no touchdowns and a pick. So Strevler came in and threw for 36 yards. Uh, James Conner was once again the main man on offense, even though he had 39 yards and a touchdown, followed by Elijah Benjamin with 22 yards. Lead receiver was Christian Kirk, seven receptions, 58 yards, followed by Zach Ertz, four receptions, 46 yards, and then James Conner, three receptions, 25 yards, and that was pretty much it. Uh, the defense just got completely smoked by the Panthers' rush game, P.J. Walker and Cam Newton, as of course Cam Newton, I'm back! Man, the Panthers own the Arizona Cardinals, you know, uh, Mainly, of course, I think about the 2015 NFC Championship game where the Panthers just destroyed them, but that's besides the point. And then the Seahawks, man, Russell Wilson was just too early. You know, he had a horrible game, 50% completion percentage, 161 yards, no touchdowns, and two picks. I, I think he just, he was a little bit rushed to come back to this game. Uh, Alex Collins led rushing with 41 yards, and then Russell Wilson with 32. Uh, lead receiver was Gerald Everett, eight receptions, 63 yards. Followed by DK Metcalf, three receptions, 26 yards. He did get ejected and tried to come back into the game. But when you're 6'4 and the size that you are, it's kind of hard to sneak back into the game. And then Tyler Lockett, two receptions, 23 yards. And Travis Homer, three receptions, 23 yards. And that was it. Oh, the defense, you know, as the time has gone on, your defense has been getting better. You know, last year, offense started here and defense was like way down here. And then it kind of just shifted, you know. Offense started to go down, but defense started to go up. And that's already showing as... Uh, last week, you were really good against the Packers until the fourth quarter. The fourth quarter, the Packers just turned it up. But once again, I'm seeing that uh, thing where the offense slowly goes down, but the defense starts to go up. That's going to be really crucial if you want to make the playoffs, but you still got to have that strong offense, but a middle-of-the-road defense. 
Uh, Cardinals are two and a half point favorites to win this one, but I'm just not sure if Kyler Murray's coming back. Even if he does, give me the Seahawks in an upset. Now you have our Sunday night football matchup between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the LA Chargers. Starting off with the Steelers, what was that? You, you tied the Detroit Lions 16 to 16. I know the conditions were terrible, but seriously, that was just awful. Mason Rudolph threw for 242 yards, one touchdown, one pick. Uh, he wasn't amazing, but this game wasn't all his fault. Najee Harris ran for 105 yards, so the rush game, still pretty strong. Uh, then followed up, lead receiver was Deontay Johnson, seven receptions, 83 yards, followed by uh, McLeod, nine receptions, 63 yards. Pat Freermuth with uh, five receptions, 31 yards. The only person ever receiving touchdown was uh, James Washington, and that was pretty much it. Uh, the defense, you know, struggled against the rush game of the Lions, but they know that Jared Goff's just a huge liability, but... What cost you guys was in overtime. The Deontay Johnson and Pat Freemuth fumbles just completely ruined you guys. And that's why you are 5-3-1. And, and it's just so ups it's so disappointing to see. I wanted 0-17 so badly. And then the Chargers, uh, tough loss to the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, Justin Herbert threw for 195 yards, one touchdown, one pick. Uh, the rush game had a little bit of trouble going as Eckler only had 44 yards. Herbert with 22, but Rontree the third. Uh, had 10 yards and a touchdown. Uh, lead receiver was uh, Keenan Allen, eight receptions, 98 yards. Mike Williams, four receptions, 33 yards. And then Palmer, three receptions, 22 yards. That was pretty much it. Uh, the defense was not really that good. Struggled against Dalvin Cook and Justin Jefferson, but that's a pretty hard duo to stop. But uh, yeah, so the Steelers, the big positive is you're going to be playing in, a, in, in an indoor stadium this year. You know, the conditions aren't going to suck like last time. Chargers are five and a half point favorites to win this one. Give me the Chargers. They win and cover the spread because what the Steelers did last week, you lose all credibility. Now you have our Monday night football matchup between the New York Giants and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Starting out with the Buccaneers, disappointing loss. Uh, you've lost your last two straight games. They were both really disappointing. Last time was the Washington football team. Anyways, Tom Brady threw for 220 yards, two touchdowns, and two picks. Like he threw two early picks, you know, tried to get the comeback going, but it just wasn't enough. Uh, Leonard Fournette was your lead rush with 47 yards. Uh, Mike Evans led receiving two receptions, 62 yards and a touchdown fall by Chris Godwin, seven receptions, 57 yards. And then Fournette, Fournette, uh, eight receptions, 45 yards. And that was pretty much it. Uh, the defense struggled against the uh, Washington football team, especially on the final drive when the football team just ran the clock down for 10 minutes. So you guys wouldn't even touch the ball again. They knew what they were doing. That was smart thinking. Smart thinking by the football team. Uh, and then the New York Giants, um, you were on your bye last week, but you came off with a 23-16 victory over the Las Vegas Raiders. Daniel Jones was there for 110 yards, one touchdown, no picks. He was just a game manager as the rush game got it going with uh, Devontae Booker with 99 yards, Penny with 35. Uh, lead receiver was Evan Ingram, three receptions, 38 yards, and a touchdown. Did not drop a pass, so good for him. Uh, Kenny Galladay threw uh, two receptions, 28 yards, and then Devontae Booker, three receptions, 23 yards. Finished that off. Kyle Rudolph, four receptions, 20 yards. Uh, the defense was pretty strong, silenced the Raiders, and was completely uh, iced with a McKinney pick six. So good for you guys getting that victory. All the Buccaneers, 11-point favorites. I'm going to say that they win, but don't cover the spread. Don't cover the spread. I thought about it for a sec. I think it's going to be a lot like last year, just a close affair that really shouldn't be as close as it is. But yeah, Bucks win and don't cover the spread. And that is going to wrap up my video for today. Thank you guys all so much for watching. If you want to see all my other uh, predictions and weekly recaps, uh, Links to all that will be in the description below. If you like this video, drop a like. If you want to see my last video, click right over here where I ran about the Saints and Titans game. It was frustrating to rant about. Uh, subscribe my channel if you haven't already by clicking over here or the subscribe button down below. Uh, comment down below what you have for this week. Who is your upset of the week, lock of the week, and is your favorite team going to win? All, the, all that jazz. Uh, make sure to follow me on all my social medias, Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok at Brennan Suter. Thank you all for watching. Have a great day. Who that Nation is 